Hey guys, I'm back at it. It is a super hot day in the hangar. I've had the hangar open most of the day, had the fan blown on me, and I'm working on uh, section uh, 27, the firewall. Um, now the firewall is a, I think it's a stainless steel. Um, and it's, it's, it, first of all, it's sharp. Uh, I've cut myself and all of my tools for taking and deburring and removing those sharps, uh, off of aluminum does not work on stainless steel. So just be careful. Um, a good idea might be to put some tape uh, or get a file out, you know, something that's harder than the stainless steel and file off some of those sharp areas, which is what I did. I still managed to cut myself once. There will be blood on my plane. Uh, there's no doubt about it. You're going to bleed for your plane. It just happens. Um, working on that though, a lot of what you're seeing me do in the background is you know, getting all the various support uh, struts and, you know, put into place, shaped, countersunk, drilled, you know, match drilled and everything and put into place in preparation and then finally putting it together. Uh, I think I talked about this in the last video or maybe I'll talk about it in the future. I'm not sure where this happens. Uh, I did inadvertently add some rivets to uh, an area that one of the gussets go over. So I had to do a couple drill outs in order to put those gussets in and then uh, put it back in place, but really there's no gotchas um, other than the, the stainless steel is a pain in the ass to work with. That's really kind of my only thing. It's, it's very easy to like dent uh, or to misshape. And I find aluminum is a little easier to correct when you do that. This stuff doesn't seem like it wants to correct. So just be aware of that, that this stuff is, is not really easy to work with. Other than that, I've gotten the majority of it done. You can see in this picture here, this is the this is the engine side. It's all completely uh, finished, uh, except for like four rivets that I somehow missed down in the very bottom right. I'm glad I took that picture because that's where I noticed it. I was like, hey. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go back and put those rivets in. Uh, and then I've also got some pro seal. Once I put those vents on there, I got some pro seal over it to kind of seal things up, which is what the plans actually suggested. Uh, but the majority of, of this is everything that you've seen before. It's not terribly complicated, uh, but things are coming together nicely. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything bad. Oh, I did, uh, I did get y'all's message. You guys were like, hey, stop apologizing for life being life message received. Thank you guys very much. I will no longer apologize for life being life. Uh, you know, I'm going to get out here and work as much as I can. My goal honestly is to get back out here and give you guys a video every week. That's really what I want to do because otherwise this plane is never going to get built. <laughs> uh, so there's that working on that. And then the next thing I'm going to work on is put the flooring underneath that firewall forward or firewall rather not the forward. firewall forward is the next kit, but uh, put the flooring underneath the firewall and then maybe we'll get to hook all this stuff up and have it actually looks sort of like an airplane. Uh, kind of getting excited. Uh, so there you go. That's what's going on in this video. It just occurred to me, I gotcha. I don't want to call this a gotcha, but it's just something I kind of noticed. Specifically around this piece, which is the nose gear tension fittings, I noticed that some of the rivets it says you're supposed to use just seemed ever so slightly too short. Um, like it'll say, oh, you're supposed to use a four dash five. And you look at it and it's like, oh, that's, you know, that's not gonna be big enough. That's not, there's not enough material sticking out through the hole to give me the shop head that I really want. So there are a couple of cases where I went ahead and I upped the rivet size from like a, you know, a four dash, a four dash five to a four dash five dot five or four dash six in the event that I, I don't think I had a five dash five. Um, so it just made it a little longer. It just made the shop head a little beefier. Uh, wasn't necessary. Eh, it made me more comfortable. Uh, that was, that was my big thing is I was uncomfortable with how short it was. I did not feel the shop head was going to be big enough. And so I made a command decision to go ahead and use the next size rivet. In theory, you know, you're supposed to supposed to be able to trust vans hundred percent on this. And I'm sure they know what they're doing. There's literally a million rivets on, on those particular parts. So it's probably fine, you know, using what they suggested, but I just felt more comfortable using a slightly bigger rivet. Uh, the other thing is there was a place where I had talked about um, not being able to reach some, you know, it was kind of a funky way to reach it. And so I had used a pop rivet. I have since drilled that pop rivet out. Um, blind rivet, sorry. I drilled that blind rivet out and used a, uh, a bigger, beefier rivet from the other side. I had a much easier access once I got my head out of using a back rivet plate and that all came together. And there's a picture of that. You can see all those rivets, none of them are blind rivets. So that works too. 
So the next thing I want to talk about is the fuel valve bracket, which is this piece right here. Um, it is very easy to get it backwards. Uh, unlike, I mean, everywhere else in the plane, you can't put things in backwards. Vans has done an excellent job of putting the rivets in such a pattern that if you have it in there backwards, it won't work. Um, not this part. This part you can ab absolutely put in backwards and the rivets will all match up. So just be careful that you have that sucker in correctly. Apparently, uh, Lynn, when he had his uh, one of his planes done, uh, he had done the fuselage was the quick build and his quick build had that piece riveted in backwards. So just be careful. Finally, uh, I did, like I said, I did go ahead and use ProSeal uh, where it says to use ProSeal. Uh, I hate using ProSeal, the whole, whole hanger stinks of it. But I did go ahead and use it because, uh, because there is a giant beating heart up there, uh, the engine. It gets hot. And uh, one of the things that I have read on the forums and, and you know, Lynn and other people around here have said is that, yeah, it gets pretty heated. So you want to try to limit as much of that heat flow as possible. Uh, he has other methods to try to limit the amount of heat coming off that engine. He says that channel, that, that middle uh, duct area gets super warm. So you want to try to limit it as much as possible. And so I'm going to address that in a later video. He has some good ideas, things he's done that, that sound amazing. So I'm going to try that uh, down the road and I will fill you in on that when I get there. We're just not there yet. One thing he did suggest doing, which I have not done, uh, was putting a an, an access to that fuel, uh, that, that thing that I talked about backwards giving some access to that because it's where your filters go, especially if you have a, I think it's an IO, you, you know, you know, IO 540, they have a fuel filter that goes there and it's a pain in the ass to unbolt everything to get to that. And you have to check it or change it like once a year. So he said, just give yourself a little door or something to get in there. I didn't do that. I may regret that later, but for now, your mileage may vary. If you want to put a door in, go ahead. There's, there are forum threads about it that uh, it's extra work. I'm trying to get this plane fil built, so I didn't do it. There are two nut plates that are on the opposite side of the firewall. Uh, the plans do detail them. There's giant arrows saying these, you know, uh, but it's really easy to miss them, especially while you're doing your dimpling to put the damn dimples on the wrong side. <laughs> so uh, just be cognizant of one. It's, there's one right down in the center that you can't miss it. And then there's one in like a row of them that has to be on the other side. So just pay special close attention when you're working on the plans or when you're reading the plans to like highlight which ones of those are. Uh, now, it does say to use a 426 rivet on both of those, which implies to me that they're supposed to be flush mounted from the other side, which is confusing because there's ample space there. So I'm not really sure why we're using a flush mount rivet uh, for either of those, but I went ahead and did it. So, uh, yeah, just follow the instructions. I don't know that flush mounted rivets there are, are especially needed. I looked ahead and I couldn't really tell that they were, but I don't think we have, the reason they said to use 426 is because I don't think we have 473-5s, which is what I think they require, 3-4s. I'd have to look, but I don't think we have 473s like that. So that's probably why it's the saying to use the flush mount. Anyways, follow the instructions. Nut plates. Um, let's talk about them for a second. I have one of the most common nut plates you're going to use is the K1100 08. Um, you use them everywhere. And in the last shipment, I think they changed them a little. Um, you've got, I mean, looking at them, they're the same, like the same depth and everything, like the holes the same, the size is the same, everything appears to be the same. But if you look here at this picture, uh, you can see that one of them has different wings or those, you know, the arms where, where you rivet in, you know, out here on either side are different. And I almost prefer the diamond shape ones to the other ones because when you, when you use your squeezer or however you're uh, adding the dimple, uh, it seems to react a little better. Um, you can see here when I use the pneumatic squeezer on the ones that don't have the diamond shape, it kind of causes them to bend upward. 
and I mean that's not good. Uh, so you have to kind of you know manually bend it back down, uh, which sucks. I don't know. I mean, if they're just getting them from a different supplier, or if they're not, if they were mislabeled. Um, I've got you know the the various screws and whatnot. They're bolts that are go in here, and they fit just fine in both. Um, this is a bad. There we go. Uh, they fit just fine in both. I don't know. And like I said, the 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 the, the, the depth of the of the of the curve of the of the indent there of the dimple is fine. So eh, so don't don't let that throw you. The uh, K eleven hundred O eight nut plates you, they look different sometimes, but they're the same. So anyways, so hot out here. It's like uh, 90, I think. <laughs> Working in the summer, I need, I need like, I need a big air conditioner. That would be awesome. Anyway, back to it. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you all so very much for watching. I'm going to have more of these videos soon. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you click that like button down there, I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to really contribute, jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month. You guys can help support me. Think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. Thanks a bunch. I have the next part coming here soon. Most of the film is actually already uh, in the can, so to speak. I just had to find the time to put the crap together. My schedule's been really crazy. Ah. See you next time.